think we're going to go ahead and get started. Maybe we can turn the music down and welcome everyone to the Global Prep Learning Network, where we are talking about the future of prep implementation studies to guide the rollout of new prep products. And we're really thrilled to have you here today. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Sinele to go over our agenda. Uh, okay, thank you, Christine. Uh, so for our agenda for today, um, I'm pretty sure we are all already registering uh, in the chat box for the introductions. Uh, then from there, we're going to have PrEP overview, uh, the overview of PrEP studies. And for the PrEP studies, we are going to have the phase study, the catalyst study, uh, Malawi injected the PrEP path to scale study, and uh, the PrEP 1519 study. And uh, at the end of our session, we're going to have a question and answer session. Um, next slide, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, at this moment, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to introduce you to my co-moderator, uh, Christine Tyson. Uh, so Christine is a pediatrician and a global health expert who is currently serving as the project director of uh, the USAID funded uh, maximizing options to advance informed choice for HIV prevention mosaic in short project. Uh, so Christine is the project director for Mosaic. Uh, she leads a consortium of international and country-based based, uh, and country -based organizations uh, that are working to accelerate market introduction of new biomedical HIV prevention products in sub-Saharan Africa. And I must say that Christine is a very fun and very young and hard person. And I'm very confident to say she has created a very positive, um, a very positive, productive, and a very friendly work environment, especially for us, the youth. Uh, shout out to you, Christine. Thank you, Sanelle. Thank you for that very kind introduction. I think that's the best introduction I've ever had. Um, I'm thrilled to introduce my co-moderator, Sanelle Ngulube who is a NextGen squad member with the Mosaic Project based out of Pangea Zimbabwe AIDS Trust. She is a qualified social worker and a sexual reproductive health and rights defender who has served as a national representative of youth in faith-based organizations under the Young People's Network on Sexual Reproductive Health, HIV and AIDS. She was also an adolescent advocate for the SRHR of Adolescent Girls and Young Women under the Social Norms Project of Plan International Norway. Um, but most excitingly to me, she is a member of the Mosaic Next Gen Squad, which is a group of youth advocates which really provide invaluable um, voices to the work that we do. And I am thrilled to be working with Sinele and learn from her uh, um, from her joy and energy and insight. So thank you, Sinele. Next slide. Um, okay, so uh, I'll introduce you all uh, to our presenters for today. Uh, so first, we have Catherine Kors, who is an infectious disease physician uh, and assistant professor of the medicine uh, at UCSF. So Dr. Kors conducts research on biomedical HIV prevention strategies um, in the Eastern Africa and the United States. She is, uh, she is also a co-principal investigator of the Seroprey uh, under action uh, and uh, peers for PrEP studies and uh, a co-investigator in the search collaboration, uh, which uh, she has helped to lead the dynamic choice prevention trials with Dr. Ayeko. Um, Next up, we have James Ayeko, uh, who is a research uh, scientist at the Kenya Medical Research Institute. So Mr. James Ayeko has participated in designing, implementation, and evaluation of various interventions aiming at optimizing delivery of prevention options such as PEP and PrEP in rural Uganda and Kenya. So currently, he is an investigator in the SAFIRE trial in the SAGE youth trial among other studies 
And then uh, next up, we have Elizabeth Irungu, um, who is a regional technical advisor for implementation. Um, who is an, uh, a technical advisor for implementation science um, and prep service delivery at Jay Parker and uh, protocol co-chair um, facilitator, it's, sorry, and the catalyst study um, under Mosaic which is maximizing options to advance informed choices for HIV prevention. Um, over to you, Christine. Thank you, Sinele. So our additional speakers today are Sarah Allender, who is the Deputy Director of the Center for Innovation in Global Health and Program Director of the Blantyre Prevention Strategy, which is an innovative systems-focused HIV prevention product. She's a member of Malawi's Ministry of Health, Kabatek Revere Expert Committee, a co-investigator for Malawi's injectable PrEP implementation science study and serves on Mosaic's product access advisory committee. We're also very pleased to welcome Dr. Friday Saide, who serves as the pregnancy and infant sub-study advisor in the landmark HPTN 084 open label extension study and is an adjunct assistant professor at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He is a member of Malawi's Ministry of Health Capitag Revere Expert Committee, where he is one of the leading investigators for Pathway to Scale for Injectable PrEP in Malawi. Inez Dorado joins us from Brazil. She is a full professor at the Federal University of Bahia, Brazil. She has extensive experience in leading research in public health. Her main research area is in the field of HIV AIDS, and she is the PI of a recent study on PrEP implementation and effectiveness among sexual minorities in Brazil between the ages of 15 and 19. We're very grateful to all of our speakers for being here today. Next slide, please. We are gonna do a very, very rapid PrEP studies overview. Next slide, turning over to you, Sinele. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Christine. Uh, so globally, there is still a high unmet need for HIV prevention. Therefore, new products, new prevention products may help fill that gate. Okay, so currently we have three biomedical HIV prevention products that are entering into the market, which are oral PrEP, PrEP ring, and CAP PrEP. Uh, so what we know is that all those PrEP methods, they all have their favorable and unfavorable um, factors as we are all different and we all have different preferences for HIV prevention. So that is why we are really maximizing our options in providing those PrEP products. And we are trying to scale up our implementation uh, research to really find out the patterns of taking up the service products. And we are very excited to be talking about our implementation uh, research studies today. Um, over to you, Christine. Thank you so much, Sinele. So we just want to highlight that um, looking at the whole spectrum of implementation studies that are planned for new products such as injectable cabotegravir and the depivirine ring. Um, it look, we think there are currently 29, there may be even more that are being planned across the globe. And you can learn more about these planned studies through uh, the Biopic Implementation Study Tracker uh, that AVAC is managing. And someone could put that link in the chat so you can find out more details about these planned studies. Next slide. Next slide is just going to highlight um, some studies that are specific around PrEP rain, and these are primarily focused in Eastern and Southern Africa, although there is some formative research taking place also in Asia Pacific. Next slide. The next slide shows that there are eight, eight studies listed here that have um, donated cabotegravir from Vive that will be starting this uh, calendar year in 2023. And so we wanted to highlight those. In addition, PEPFAR is procuring CAB directly from VIV uh, for uh, implementation this year. And this, um, and you could see sort of the total volume of doses that are being planned. And there are two studies within that PEPFAR procurement as well, one of which we will hear from today. So we don't have time to hear from all studies, but we have selected four studies uh, uh, to give sort of a spectrum of the kind of implementation research that is underway uh, being planned to either, either has started or will start this year. Uh, so without further ado, we will move over to our first study, which is the search study, and we'll hear from Kate and James. Over to you, Kate and James. 
Uh, thank you, Christine and Samil, and we thank you for the invitation. Kate and I are honored to make this presentation on behalf of our search collaboration. Kindly allow me to go off camera to save bandwidth. Um, next slide. Well, such is a multidisciplinary, multinational research collaboration examining population level approaches to reduce HIV incidence and improve community health in rural East Africa. Uh, we design and evaluate multi-disease interventions, both HIV and non-HIV, that consider different contexts and health priorities uh, for persons of all ages and gender. Uh, kindly allow me to mention at this point that we have published several articles from the SARCH study that may be of interest to you. Um, we have used our prior work to inform our current work in HIV prevention interventions. Uh, first, we conducted a universal test and treat trial in which we exceeded the UNAIDS 1990-90 targets before our second follow-up year. With these, we observed increases in population level viral suppression, reduction in mortality, perinatal transmission, uh, TB, and had better hypertension control. We saw a reduction in HIV incidence. However, the incidence uh, was still above targets. We added a population level PrEP intervention uh, to the test and treat trial and so reduced incidence among those who initiated PrEP. We, however, observed gaps in prevention coverage with the need or an option for persons with unanticipated periodic sexual exposures. We therefore conducted a post-exposure prophylaxis pilot that showed high levels of completion and defined the space for PEP on an occupational exposures in our settings. Next slide. In our current study, the search sapphire, we ask the question, with expanding HIV prevention options, PrEP and PEP and additional long-acting uh, products in the prevention pipeline, how do we offer and deliver choices? So previous studies have provided data on uh, theoretical choices of HIV prevention products. However, data is limited on actual product choices made by clients and the impact of choice on prevention coverage. So in this study, we hypothesize that a dynamic choice a HIV prevention model offering choices in prevention products and services, and the option to change preference over time would increase HIV prevention coverage. Next slide. So this slide uh, depicts our intervention. We developed a dynamic choice a HIV prevention intervention that was based on the PRECEED framework. We offered choice in product, uh, PEP or PREP with the option of switching, uh, switching over from time to time, uh, testing choice, as well as service location choice. All these were offered within the context of a patient or client-centered care, uh, where we provided uh, phone access to clinicians, longer refill for start and refills, structured assessment of barriers with personalized plan to overcome the barriers, as well as psychological support where required. Finally, we offered uh, provider training in patient-centered care and patient education with emphasis on uh, patient agency in the selection of choices. Next slide. So we carried out three randomized trials of dynamic choice prevention and compared DCP to the standard of care, which is referral to HIV clinic for prevention services in these three settings. First, in the antenatal post, Neto Clinic, at this point, allow me to briefly describe the thinking behind uh, these three trial settings. We focus on the ANC because uh, pregnancy and postpartum periods are times of increased risk of, of HIV acquisition with potential perinatal infection. And by design, the ANC offers a setting with frequent engagement of clients that presents an opportunity to offer biomedical uh, prevention. Secondly, the outpatient departments, these provide uh, routine primary and urgent uh, care services for both men and women. The outpatient departments present a platform for diagnosis of, of many ailments and substantial uh, proportion of new HIV infection. It's also an understudied entry point to prevention. Thirdly, we delivered HIV prevention to the community using community health workers. 
the CHWs uh, provide a range of primary health care and health promotion services. And HIV is one of the areas that requires attention in our settings in Africa. Second is that a community-based entry point for HIV prevention would extend reach beyond our health facilities. For design, the ANC and the OPD trial were individually randomized trials when the CHW trial was a cluster randomized trial. In terms of population, we offered the intervention to both women and men age 15 and above reporting current or, an, or anticipated risk of HIV exposure. Our primary outcome over 48 weeks was the proportion of follow-up time covered by PrEP, PEP, uh, or PEP uh, assessed via self-report. I now hand this over to Kate for the results and the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Thanks very much, James. Next slide, please. So in terms of our results, this is an example from the outpatient department trial from the intervention arm in terms of product choice, HIV testing choice, and visit location choice. Again, these could change over time during the trials. On the left, you can see that most participants chose PrEP at each visit, shown in dark green, but 15% ever chose PEP during follow-up, and that's shown in blue. HIV testing choice of self-testing in pink increased over time, as did the choice of out-of-facility community visits, shown in blue on the right. Next slide, please. These figures show participant trajectories in terms of PrEP and PEP use during periods of HIV risk. Each row is a participant, and each column is a month of follow-up. Green represents time at risk covered with PrEP or PEP, whereas red represents time at risk not covered by PrEP or PEP. And we found that um, PrEP and PEP use changed over time and according to HIV risk, especially in the intervention arm where you see more green, whereas there's more red indicating time not covered um, in the standard of care arm. Next slide, please. In terms of our primary outcome of follow-up time covered by PrEP or PEP, we found that the dynamic choice prevention intervention increased time covered by PrEP or PEP across the three settings by 40% in antenatal, 29% in outpatient, and 27.5% in the community trial. Next slide, please. So in these three randomized trials, we found that a dynamic choice prevention intervention with choice of PrEP or PEP, HIV testing modality, and visit location, plus patient-centered care resulted in over twofold greater time covered by a biomedical prevention option compared to the standard of care, suggesting that these models are a promising approach to expand coverage of prevention options as new products emerge and to respond to client preferences. But as you saw, there were still gaps in coverage and really a need for additional products. Next slide, please. So in response, we're currently conducting a 48-week extension of these three trials that we just described. We're offering a choice of PrEP, PEP or CAB-LA in the DCP intervention arm, and we're evaluating the effect of dynamic choice prevention with CAB-LA as a prevention option on biomedical prevention coverage compared to the standard of care. Next, please. We're also studying breakthrough infections in partnership with the action study, um, uh, breakthroughs on long-acting prevention products using sensitive research assays for diagnostics, resistance, and PK, and investigating subsequent HIV treatment outcomes. Um, to do this, Action is partnering with Search, Catalyst, and Mosaic. Next slide, please. So what are some early learnings so far from the Search cab -LA extension? Well, we found very high levels of interest in cab -LA across the three trial settings, including in the community trial. We found that many individuals who have started cab -LA were actually not previously using PrEP or PEP despite having access to these products. Um, and we also have noted that really, as we go forward, strategies are needed to ensure um, ongoing engagement and delivery of CAB LA. Next slide, please. So our next step moving from these pilot trials is to test the effect of dynamic choice prevention on HIV incidence in a population level study. We're conducting a 160,000 person trial um, in rural Western Kenya and Southwestern Uganda. And we're studying the effect of dynamic choice prevention in the context of a community precision health model. Um, this leverages existing facility-based outreach um, and engages community health workers to deliver optimized dynamic choice HIV prevention, as well as treatment interventions with optimized data and analytics. The product choices in this trial are oral prep, PEP, the depivirine vaginal ring, and we're planning for CAB LA introduction. So we'll be testing whether community precision health leveraging existing infrastructure to reach, engage, and deliver health services with new products and analytics in a multi-disease model can accelerate progress to ending AIDS and improve community health. Next slide, please. 
We would like to sincerely thank the study participants and communities, Ministries of Health of Kenya and Uganda, sponsors, the entire search team, and the PrEP Learning Network. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Kate and James. Uh, so now we'll move on to the Catalyst study. Over to you, Elizabeth. Hi, thank you, um, Catherine and James, for such an interesting study that you present. So now I'll present um, the Catalyst study, and I, I'll go off the video now, um, which is a multi country implementation science study to inform the rollout of new PrEP products in East and South and Africa. And I'm presenting this on behalf of a large group of people who have been working on this, on this study. Next slide. So the, uh, the Catalyst study is really catalyzing access to new prevention options to stop HIV. Um, under the mosaic, it's under the mosaic project and will use mo mixed methods to characterize and assess implementation of an enhanced service delivery package, um, providing choice of prep products among women at real world prep for delivery sites that are already doing prep implementation. So we will offer oral prep, we'll offer prep ring and cup prep, but then the products will only be used um, post regulatory approval. So thus, we are going to start with stage one, where we have approval of ring and oral prep. But then as we get approval of um, carbotecravir and participating countries, then we will transition to stage two. The main objectives of the study, we have three main objectives. One is to characterize implementation of this package and assess facilitated them barriers at different levels of the health system, the individual level and community uh, level. And then for objective two, we'll describe patterns of PrEP use and use effectiveness in the context of PrEP choice and assess what factors are associated with such um, use patterns. And then objective three will be to describe clinically relevant indicators among PrEP users, including the rates of HIV infection and drug resistance among those who may acquire HIV following PrEP exposure. Next slide. So we are conducting this study in real world facilities that have an existing PrEP service delivery program. On these programs, we are going to layer this enhanced service delivery package, which really is at the core of this package is provision of PrEP choice. So either of the PrEP products available would be offered to women. But then to provide such choice to PrEP clients, then we do need other supportive interventions, which now become part of this package. For instance, we'll do additional counseling for those who want PrEP. We may do enhanced follow-up for people who may miss visits, and that would be at the individual level. For the providers, we'll do training about, you know, the various methods available, how to deliver them, um, additional work with empathetic, uh, being empathetic as you deliver choice, and we'll discuss this some more. And then at the facility level, we will um, see what, what are the best ways in which to um, document these visits, you know, where you have switching, you have return, you have, you know, different methods. What's the best way to do M&E um, for such uh, visits? And then at the, at the community level, we're going to develop materials that promote informed choice. But then this package has so many components but what's going to happen is we are going to use quality improvement methods to refine a component and identify what are the very core components that need to be in place to deliver this package. And this will be context specific. It's likely to be different for different sites or different um, countries. Next slide. So as part of this study, we have embarked on lots of training. We've been doing lots and lots of training, but one of the trainings, been, part of the training we've been doing is health provider training. Um, so, and it's support to counsel and deliver choice. So health providers, not the research team, providers in the health facilities are taught, have training on clinical aspects of each HIV prevention method, you know, uh, how, what are the eligibility requirements? How do you deliver? How does it work? 
And then we also have training on how to communicate with clients about choice of HIV prevention methods and to help clients select the method that best meets their unique lifestyle and needs. And then, like I said, also is would have empathy building to support counseling interactions with young clients and LGBTQ populations clients using empath needs. Next slide. slide. So this is like, this is a slide that would be in the training package. And um, so for this training, as your training providers, you do have a choice counseling training where the objectives are to one, define what informed choice is, to help providers understand how to talk about choice with their clients, and then to help providers become familiar with the tools that they can use to facilitate choice counseling. Next slide, please. And so to begin with, we determine, you know, we help providers define and determine what informed choice is, which we have adopted from the Mosaic Choice Principles. And it is really where the individuals have the autonomy, the knowledge, and the freedom from coercion to select a method that, uh, to select the best method for them in a specific market. Next slide. And so, um, so what happens, assisting the client in making an informed choice is part of the counseling process, whereby the provider and the client explore the client's knowledge and the needs in relation to the available options. Choice counseling is really a two-way conversation between the, the provider and the client, and they have an and, the, and both of them will have an opportunity to provide information about themselves, about the services available, about the products available, to ask and respond to questions. And the flow of that session is really flexible, but really client-centered. So it relies on the, on the client's individual needs and, and knowledge to guide the flow. So it's not, you know, this must follow the other and must follow the other. It really is a flexible conversation, a uh, flowing conversation. But ultimately is that you want to provide um, the provider to respect the rights of the client to be able to make an informed choice and to acknowledge that the choice may change over time so that at their next visit, they may come with a whole totally different um, need and choose a different method. Next slide. So for instance, um, how does choice counseling fit in this conversation of where? So perhaps a client tests quality about a facility and is interested in preventing HIV or has heard about a new prep method like prep ring being offered in the facility or has read about has read a fact sheet about a new prep method that has been placed, you know, the fact sheet perhaps at a waiting area. And so as this client goes into a counseling session, the provider invites her to have a discussion about the catalyst study and also about what options there are, what prep options there are at the site. And as they engage, the provider begins to understand what the client knows about HIV prevention and prep options, and the client's needs and knowledge guide the flow of um, this conversation. They may have a discussion about what options are right for the client based on her lifestyle. And then if there are any questions or anxieties, these are addressed, and the client is informed that they could always come back. Um, if they need anything clarified. Next uh, slide. So here we have a few tools um, that providers and clients can use to support choice. The, the first is really is a, is a journey map, which, is, um, which could be a placemat or a poster in the clinical room, and the provider and the client walk through this um, journey tool together. And it helps guide the conversation so that you help the client arrive at a method that works best for them. So the discussion with the client really gets at answering the question, what is important to you in a HIV prevention method? And the client would be responding to persons like you, and it would have responses like, I want something I can control, or I want something that no one else will know about, or I want something that prevents STIs as well. So depending on the client's needs, you're able to go through the methods available in arrive at what works best for the client. But this poster does not have a lot of detail and the provider needs to have a lot more information about the methods. And this is available in the manual. So the manual is a second, um, the second um, pictorial there. 
and the the manual has a lot more information. Uh, it, it is really a reference that the provider perhaps would look up in advance of this counseling session or would have it at the side of the desk and make reference if they need to clarify something. Um, it, it, it shouldn't really be a barrier. It's used it's really as an aid. And then the third one is a digital tool, which is designed for mobile phone use. So perhaps a client might have it before they come, might have access to this tool before they come to the clinic or as they are waiting at the waiting area and they go through the methods and they can bring up questions based on this tool that they have used during their counseling conversation with the provider. So next slide. And then finally, the other product that would we have are fact sheets. This, this are one pager or two pager on each of the methods available. And this may be placed at a waiting area or there may be, um, uh, the provider may actually issue that fact sheet to the client at the end of a session. Once they have decided, well, you know, I want to use oral prep and the provider would give you an oral prep fact sheet to go home with so that you can learn more about the method that you have picked. Um, and so this gives you a lot more information than perhaps what you might have received in the clinic, or if you want to make reference to additional information um, in the clinic. So um, I think next slide, and that should be the end. Yes, and I do want to acknowledge that this this work has been done by many, many people um, within the Katami study, and I'm proud to present on their behalf. So thank you. Um, thank you so much, Elizabeth. And speaking for myself and the other young people, uh, we are very delighted to have this virus HIV prevention method in the market. So uh, we'll move on to the next uh, presenter, uh, presenters with Sarah Alinda and Friday Saidi. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you for the opportunity to present Malawi's Injectable PrEP Path to Scale study today on behalf of the co-PIs and investigators. Next slide. Malawi's study is unique in that it's building off the learning and systems platform that we've established over the last three years in Blantyre, which will also be adapted in the study's second location, Lilongwe. In three years, the Blantyre Prevention Strategy, or BPS, has successfully demonstrated an optimized system in action capacitated with the prevention cascade capabilities and health system enabler capacities, and how stakeholders can come together under the leadership of the district health office to use data, link service delivery, and address challenges in communities for a more effective HIV response. Just like BPS, Malawi study is government-led and utilizes a collaborative networked approach aimed at not only understanding CAMLA delivery, but creating the path to scale for injectable PrEP in Malawi. The expert committee guiding the study is comprised of clinical trials experts, including the HPTN 084 co-chair, social and implementation scientists, public health and digital health implementers, civil society and donor partners. Next slide. The Malawi injectable PrEP path to scale study includes four objectives over two phases that constitute a foundational pre-implementation phase and the implementation phase that includes cab LA delivery through del diverse channels and to diverse populations, and using study learning to inform systems, policy, and other adjustments needed to clear the path to scale. We have local IRB approval for objective one, which is underway, and the protocol for objectives two and three will be submitted soon. Next slide. For today's presentation, we'll focus on two key support aspects of the study. First, the client-centered continuation support, oh, sorry, next slide, embedded in the study design. And second, some of the system support at provider and facility levels that will underpin CAD study enrollment and support for continuation. Next slide. I'll turn to Friday now to present on the client-centered support. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Uh, next slide. So the client support is focused on objective two and three of our project. Uh, basically, objective two will start with uh, six month reading. This stage, 900 in individuals will access uh, injectable uh, carbotan review prep to establish a programmatic uh, foundation for implementation. 
following the leading phase, we will have 9,000 additional individuals. We make a total of 9,900 clients across 36 sites who, that will initiate Kabele uh, prep over a six-month enrollment period, and then they will be followed up up to a 12-month uh, period of follow-up. Objective three will then be a cluster randomized control trial that will be on top of the fundamental study. And this will be mainly to evaluate effectiveness of the demand creation activities and Kabele provision at increasing, uh, that is aimed at increasing prep uptake in Malawi, as well as assessing effectiveness of an enhanced implementation strategy uh, within, between the standard of care as well as the uh, implementation uh, implementation uh, study. So the, uh, the cluster, uh, clusters will be based on primary health care uh, centers, pri uh, private clinic, drop-in centers, and co community-based organizations that are going to be providing PrEP within the 36 that, uh, that will aim at looking at the priority populations. So the clusters will run be randomized to the standard of care um, where there will be PrEP continuation, and then there will be an enhanced bundles of uh, clinical support and provider focus implementation strategies that are aimed at uh, sustained uh, PEP use. So we will employ uh, certified sampling across clusters to ensure balance among uh, balancing uh, among its, uh, geographic uh, areas and the type of clinics and population that will be set in the intervention as well as in the control units. Uh, next slide. So upon completion of our objective one, we will conduct a human-centered uh, code design workshop in Malawi, which during this time, study investigators, policymakers, district health coordinators, facility level health workers, and clients and other stakeholders will meet to assess the findings from the objectives that are objective 1A and 1B, uh, and assess any updated scientific evidence that is relevant and update and revise our objective 2 and 3. Um, and examples of decision points that could be made at this stage may include exclusion of population delivery units or change in the standard of care or enhanced support um, to be rolled out for injectable PrEP. So the table here just highlights some of the national elements of standard of care and the enhanced con continuous support arm that is pending the, the results for the objective one and will be evaluated as we get the learning points from objective one. So I'll turn back to Sarah to discuss the system support for the study and the path to scale. Thanks, Friday. Uh, next slide. And next slide. Thanks. As I noted, we're building the study off our BPS systems platform, which will continue in Blantyre. And we are adapting three of our program elements to a long way to underpin the study there. Each of these elements has yielded important systems change and learning in Blantyre, which we believe will be essential to the success of the study and contribute to longer term paths to scale. The quality improvement element in particular will improve client-centered care through provider and facility training, QI change approaches, and networked learning informed by community insight. Next slide. The inclusion of a QI collaborative in Blantyre is one of the first applications of QI to HIV prevention. The Prep Up Collaborative has 23 participating facilities representing the public and private sectors, drop-in centers for key populations, and a tertiary education clinic. Next slide. Prep Up was launched in early 2021, just after the national prep guidelines were disseminated. Prep has demonstrated. Uh, next slide. Has demonstrated that building district-based. And sorry, one more slide. QI capacity for implementation and leadership embedded in the DHO structure, including leadership by the district quality unit, is key for successful sustainability and scale up of HIV prevention products and services, including oral prep. As part of the approach, we increased the dosage of QI coaching at the 23 facilities, all current oral prep providers in Blantyre, through mentorship of district staff coordinators. At these facilities, monthly coaching visits were augmented through monthly meetings of 24 coaches and mentors led by the district quality coordinator with support from QI experts. Next slide. In addition to the DHO mentorship and coaching visits, periodic learning sessions have been convened at four to six month intervals. Through these learning sessions, Prep Up has been the major platform for facility teams to exchange knowledge and share progress with each other. 
as well as inform the DHO and PEPFAR funded and other implementing partners with new knowledge about successes and challenges of implementing HIV prevention services. Next slide. A unique feature of the application of QI through BPS is the linkage with community. Beyond the traditional QI collaborative approach, BPS has engaged community labs that are generating insights about demand and service access barriers and has connected those labs with facilities through the learning sessions and other means. During the action periods, insights are generated and shared with facilities, which create change ideas that they test and then report on during the learning sessions. One important example of community lab generated prototype testing and linkage with the QI collaborative is the introduction of PrEP ambassadors based on insights gathered from community labs, which engaged female sex workers and HUIW. The ambassadors, which is a peer-based model to drive PrEP demand at facilities, also have supported increased service uptake of oral PrEP and improved linkages between facilities and communities. Referral data collected by PrEP ambassadors and QI data collection processes at facilities indicate that increase in PrEP demand enrollment from AGYW engaged by the PrEP ambassadors compared to other mobilizers. Next slide. There's additional learning from the approach that we will bring to the long way to, and to underpin the study. By supporting the capacitation of the D district QI unit, QI mentors, and QI focal persons in all PrEP up sites, we see facilities able to facilitate regular QI team meetings, plan, implement, and document QI projects aimed at improving HIV prevention, conduct data collection, and interpret those data using run charts, all of which will be important for making adjustments as injectable prep and new products become available. Establishing a community of practice through collaborative learning sessions is key for sharing learning and spread of best practices in HIV prevention, including PrEP, throughout the district and across IPs. We believe this networked community of practice will improve demand and uptake for, of injectable PrEP and serve as a critical systems foundation for the longer term path to scale in Malawi, as well as can be a model for other local HIV responses. Next slide. And in closing, on behalf of Friday and myself, I wanna thank the government of Malawi for its leadership and all of our BPS and study partners and collaborators, many of you whom have joined today's webinar. Thanks. Um, thank you so much, Sarah and Mr. Friday. That was very great. Uh, we are going to move on to PrEP 59 and study. Um, over to you, Ines. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Sir. On behalf of my colleagues and uh, PIs of PrEP 59, choices that the name of our project um, I will present it. Um, uh, so next slide, please. Um, so pr the primary objective, very briefly, I'll mention to you um, to here is to evaluate the implementation of the UPREP protocol now with three modalities, Kabele, event driven, and daily oral. Daily oral, uh, we have experienced for the past three years uh, with our previous project. And it's, the implementation is among adolescents 15 to 19 years old in public service because this project is aimed um, to provide evidence for public service in Brazil. And adolescents are 15 to 19 years old. And the group of adolescents are men as men, non-binary assigned male at birth, transgender women, and transgender men. Also, to improve the diagnosis and management of STIs among PrEP users using an implementation of a youth center approach. Uh, next slide. I will briefly describe it to you the study design. Um, so, it will be a multi site, uh, three capital cities represented uh, regions in Brazil, uh, the southeast and the northeast region, a prospective demonstration cohort study cohort study of PrEP modalities using a mixed method design combining quantitative and qualitative approach. And the follow-up will be up to 36 months, 33 months using Kabele plus treatment for the sale phase, and also 36 months for those who choose auto PrEP. So at screening and evaluation, if they choose one of the arms, auto PrEP or Kabele, uh, they can enroll in the same day 
um, after um, the screening evaluation. So next slide, I'll mention to you that there will be a sub-study, the diagnostic evaluation of HIV testing, which will include description of HIV infections in PrEP users, drug resistance, HIV subtype, and viral load. The evaluation of leakage retention and adherence stresses is for all the PrEP modalities. Evaluation of oral PrEP provision by telehealth. So we built a tele-PrEP uh, protocol within uh, our study. Evaluation of the strategy for part notification for STI and acceptability of finger stick whole blood HIV subset. Because before in the previous study, we used uh, the oral test. Next slide. This is just to tell you that uh, we have permission to so to show the images. And now the focus of my talk today is on demand creation strategies. They are safer to reach adolescents. And we built also from our previous experience, we enrolled 1,216 adolescent daily order prep in a phase one study. And the message here is that online and peer driven face to face strategies provide a critical balance between offer comprehensive coverage and next sexual health service for adolescents of key populations from different social backgrounds. So it's important uh, to combine face-to-face uh, -face and online uh, strategies as well. Next slide, please. And environment matters. And this is our photos from our clinic in Salvador site. And a lot of the elements that you see here, they were built together with the community. And so you see a welcome reception uh, with the uh, name of our clinic. It's Prepara Salvador, which we are in Salvador. You see butterfly, meaning uh, you can be what you are, uh, and you have liberty um, in our clinic. Um, we turn the fresh fields into mascots. We have uh, a group of uh, bread queens from before, and also uh, peer educators using drumming um, also in some of our sessions. Next slide, please. So making connections is very important, and I tell you that we do have uh, um, clearance from the local IRC and from WHO IRC as well. And as we are waiting uh, for the drug to arrive in Brazil, and I have very good news because our um, regulatory agents here uh, just approved uh, cabotegravy to be used for prevention and for treatment. So this is really good news. Um, so we all drug to arrive here, and we are working on that. But we are also uh, working with the community. And you see here that our team goes to community based organizations, to schools, using interactive approach for HIV prevention games, QA, and um, the participation of the young uh, peer educators from the community. Next slide, please. More on youth engagement. Uh, in in venue, so this is the work of the educators in different venues in Salvador during summertime. Uh, we had a a, um, a very nice strategy using the popsicle at uh, at beaches where uh, young people gather, and with the popsicle attract uh, young people to start the conversation. We had a table with prevention material with cards to inform about our clinic. And if they were interested to know more about the clinic, the young peer educators would take them to the clinic. And communication materials uh, from, involve flyers, fans, posters, cards, and brochures. These are all new uh, for um, you, um, beauty information on cabotegravy and in fact, it's always part of the conversation. These are young people, and it's important that we talk about sex when we talk about HIV prevention, and our materials talk about that. So it's all important to give 
And here, um, one of the ones in, in the left side says prevention started before uh, sex really get uh, uh, heat, heated. And we use graphics to eat the content about uh, long acting injectable prep. Um, and you will use a TR code to facilitate access by young people to our social networks and contact channels, uh, fans, and brochures explaining what is the injectable prep. It's a new modality, and not many people know, uh, especially adolescents from uh, the diversity uh, population, need to have more information what Cabele uh, really is. So the online connection, uh, we are, of course, we are uh, using uh, in our project. This is our page on Instagram. And what we learned is that uh, boosted posts uh, really capture a greater attention of adolescents. Next. So be where young people are. On YouTube, on Instagram, uh, we have developed um, TikTok. Uh, we have a TikTok young guy uh, who provides um, constantly information about prep um, and using acceptable language, men and personas from the LGBTQIA plus community. We also um, are continuing uh, to use the, our transgender tech boat. Uh, she was developed on our previous study. In fact, there is an article uh, describing more detail who is Amanda Selfie. And Amanda Selfie also will have a role in, in this phase uh, of prep choices. And she will monitor adherence as well. She's available 24 by 7, by 7 now on WhatsApp to discuss sensitivity, sexual, sexuality issues, and, and prep and adherence. Next. We have developed a fun pouch for prevention. It's, um, it's very popular among the community. There are different colors. And the pouch uh, includes uh, a prevention kit uh, with a self-test, uh, information, cards, condoms. And now we have included female condoms because of our new uh, groups uh, that have been added to this project. And we have a need to make a perfume that has been created for uh, from uh, Anita. Anita is a famous singer uh, in Brazil, and she has donated some of this perfume and has become very popular. And young people um, go into Instagram, and if they decided to have more information and uh, to have the pouch, uh, we send it to them. And I'm coming to the end. Last but not least, we have developed a game called Game Prep. And the Game Prep has a main character. His name is Augusto. And the storyline follows Augusto on his journey on HIV prevention and a roadmap to the prep service. And Augusto is part of an undersell uh, transgender uh, a jet boat crew. And the story goes on until uh, uh, information about uh, how uh, to reach the prep clinic. Um, also, I, I told you that I we have this teleprep um, project um, to make uh, to make auto prep as we have learned uh, uh, the follow up of those we choose to be in auto prep to make it very simple uh, to them. But uh, I'll can send me, I can send you more information about. Um, this part of this project and, and how we're going to evaluate it. And I wanted to, to thank uh, the protocol, uh, all the protocol chairs, and lots and lots of people who make this project possible in each one of these guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ines. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, I want to thank all of our presenters. I don't I don't think we will have time for much um, um, panel discussion because we have we are nearing the end of the hour. I there were a lot of questions in the chat, most of which I think have been answered. 
One of the things I forgot to mention up front about these four presentations is, is that we were trying to highlight some different aspects in each study so that it wasn't just a, a series of study design presentations, but wanted to highlight that dynamic choice intervention that is being used by search and then about you know some of the provider and counseling approaches were highlighted through the catalyst, the QI approaches highlighted through the Malawi study, and now some of the demand um, creation and community engagement highlighted through uh, the uh, PrEP 1519 study. So all of these studies have these different components, counseling, provider training. Um, not all have QI, but several do. Uh, and and this community engagement and user engagement. And I think um, it's just nice to go a little bit deeper into some of these. Um, only one of these studies has actually launched with, with CAB so far, with Cabotegravir, and that is the search study. Uh, but the others are anticipated to launch with CAB and in some cases also with RING this calendar year. Um, I, there is a keen interest in the chat around early experiences um, uh, that the search study has had. So I might just give just a moment turning over to Kate and James to see if there's anything more you want to share about that early experience with CAP. Thanks so much, Christine. Yeah, really appreciated the the outstanding questions. And I think, you know, again, we're finding very high levels of interest so far. Um, we are seeing some injection site reactions as is expected. Um, and as the study goes on, we're really looking forward to sharing more about continuation, persistence um, over time, um, and also learning from these other um, amazing studies that are about to launch. Thank you, Kate. And just to note that we do, you know, we, we hope that there will be interim learnings that are shared from all of these studies in real time as we go on um, so that we don't have to wait many, many years to find out what those patterns are, of use are that um, Sinelli mentioned we still, we still don't know. I will just turn it over to Sinelli for any final words or comments she wants to make before we close. Um, okay, I would like to thank all the presenters and everyone for attending. And I must say the presentations were very um, informative and with um, fireworks. And I'm pretty sure everyone got a piece of the pie. Uh, so for our upcoming sessions, we are going to have uh, our next Mosaic Global Prep Learning uh, Network quarterly. So it's going to be in September. And uh, everyone should feel free to visit the Prep Learning Network to watch the recordings of these webinars. Um, that's what I have. Over to you, Christine. Okay, thank you so much. We will be sharing the slides, as you can see. And also, please be sure to check out that um, Prep Study Tracker that AVAC um, has developed. So wish you all a good day and week. And again, thank you to our presenters. Bye-bye. <laughs>